Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna film a few videos and I'm really excited about it. So this one is discussing and judging um, the recently released long list for the International Booker Prize. So these are all books within the last year that have been translated into English. Um, so as you know, I love translations. So I wanted to have a peek through the list. There are, I believe, 13 and I pretty much Put them in four categories. Absolutely not, probably not, probably yes, and absolutely yes. I mean no disrespect to any of the authors or the translators, this is just my opinion and my opinion is very different from obviously everyone else's. Uh, so if you want another perspective, uh, I have watched one of my favorites on booktube, Willow, um, at Books and Bow, I will leave their channel link down below. They have reacted to this, uh, and definitely for one of the books, it has tinged what I think about it, so uh, I will mention that when we get there. But without further ado, let's jump into it, starting off with the absolutely not evers. <laughs> so let's start it off with the bottom. This is A New Name, Septology 6 through 7 by John Foss, John Fossey, uh, from Norway. This is published by Fitzcarraldo Editions, and this is just strictly, it's number six and seven in a series, so I'm never gonna read it. Uh, okay, let's move on to the next one. The next one is The Books of Jacob by Olga Teruzikic sorry, uh, who is a Polish writer also published by Fitzcarraldo Editions. Maybe it's just what Fitzcarraldo Editions publishes, maybe I'm not interested in it. Especially historical elements are not usually my strong suit. Um, and this one in particular is, I'm looking at the Goodreads, um, and it says it's 920 pages. So this follows the uh, Ottoman Empire, and the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth uh, in search of someone, a historical figure. So I'm not in, it's too long, um, it's historical, and it's just not for me. Um, okay, next up is Alina Knows by Claudia Pinheiro, uh, who is a writer from Spain, and this is published by Charco Press. Um, so this one is here just because the synopsis, um, it's about a woman who's found dead in a bell tower, um, and then it's the officials investigating the incident, uh, and the, the woman's mother, who is very sick, is the only person who might know what happens. Uh, so it's talking about a difficult journey, an old debt. Um, so I picture, I'm just assuming, I might be wrong, that it sounds like a quite like slow, unraveling thriller where it's not really a thriller it's more like a slow thriller or like more of a mystery um and it just really it doesn't appeal to me so much i don't think i would i don't think i would pick it up um and then the fourth one in this category is the book of mother by violaine Holtzman, uh who is from france so this one is about a toxic mother daughter relationship but there's no like evil child trope and I'm very specific about mother daughter or family dynamics I either like them to be like super messed up or normal like I don't like when they're just like bickering and just everyday dysfunction if that makes sense that's so messed up but uh, that's just how it is. So this one, which is out by Scribner, is not on my to-read list. Um, and then the last one in this is Tomb of Sand by Geetanjali Shri, uh, who is an Indian writer. And I think this is the first one to be translated from Hindi, if I'm correct. Um, and this is published by Tilted Access Press, a press I love. Uh, however, Despite the topic being very interesting, so it's an 80 year old woman who slips into depression but then when she surfaces from her depression she has a second lease on life and she wants to do things out of convention such as striking up a friendship with a trans woman um, and having a new relationship with her daughter. So that is very interesting to me. However, what's not interesting to me is the 740 pages. I am such a small book person that 
uh, big books really intimidate me and I just know I will never pick it up. So if I'm being honest, I will never pick it up. So that's why it's in the absolutely not category, despite me being interested by the premise. So now that we're getting into the other sections, I am going to talk a bit more about the synopsises of the book um, because I think they are more relevant than me just saying I'm not going to read them. So in the probably not category, we have Phenotypes, which is uh, by Paulo Scott out from uh, and other stories published from Brazil. So this follows two brothers, one who can pass as white and one who cannot, um, and he looks more like their black father, while one looks more like their white mother. And beyond that dynamic, um, as one of their 50th birthdays comes up, they find out that their niece has been arrested um, for, at a protest carrying a concealed gun, and the gun was used in a killing decades earlier and they had something to do with it. So um, I'm interested but I have also read within the reviews on Goodreads that um, there was just some problems with the writing style uh, so I'm a little hesitant in waiting to see what other people think as more people read the book. Um, and the other one in this category is More Than I Love My Life by David Grossman. Uh, who is writing from Israel and it's published by Knopf. And not only is it historical, it's also multi-generational, three generations. Uh, so it's following three strong women, Vera, 90, her daughter Nina, and her granddaughter. And the granddaughter wants to film uh, the story of her grandmother's life being imprisoned on uh, in a jail off the coast of Croatia when they wanted her to denounce her husband as a traitor and she wouldn't. Um, so it's about that. I'm very interested, but it's also historical, uh, so I'm just like back and forth. So it's a probably not, but I'm intrigued. So let's get into the probably yeses. Uh, so the probably yes here is Paradise by Fernanda Melkor. Uh, man, and I'm so hesitant about it, but interested. So Melkor is a Mexican writer, and this is published by Fitzcarraldo Editions. So I read Hurricane Season by Melker and I did not enjoy it. It was one of the worst books I read that year, which is very divisive. Some people really don't like it, myself included, and some people really love it. I know that Willow really loved it. So um, two ends of the spectrum. So this follows two like misfit teenagers in a housing complex. One is Franco, who is lonely, overweight, and addicted to porn, and he obsessively fantasizes about seducing his neighbor, who is an attractive married woman and mother. We also follow Polo, who wants to quit his job as a gardener and flee his overbearing mother. Um, so they are friends, and it's each talking about how they're going to get a set about getting what they think they deserve. Uh, so it's shelved as a dark and contemporary, so I probably will pick this up. I probably will pick this up because it sounds really interesting. Um, I'm just a little nervous because I didn't like Melker's earlier writing. Um, and then the other one in this list is Happy Stories Mostly uh, by Norman Erickson Pasiribu, uh, who is a writer from Indonesia. And this is by Tilted Axis Press, another publisher uh, that I really enjoy. So this is a short story collection, and this was lower on my list until I heard Willow talking about it, and they were really excited about it, and they said that it was really great, and I really highly regard their opinion, so it bumped it up in interest for me. So it says, uh, playful, shape-shifting, and emotionally charged, this is a collection of 12 short stories that queer the norm, and I am intrigued. Um, and then in the absolutely yes category, we have four books. So first up is Heaven by Mieko Kawakami, who is a Japanese writer, um, and this is published by Europa Editions. This was already on my to reads TBR list on Goodreads, um, and I do already have it on my Kindle, so um, this I will absolutely be reading, particularly because of the renewed interest in the international prize. This is following two 14-year-old students in Japan who are severely bullied and about the ramifications in their life as they grow up. Um, and then after that, I'm interested in After the Sun by Jonas Eka, uh, who is a writer from Denmark. And this is published by Lowly Editions, Lolly Editions. 
uh, and I've never heard of them before, so I'm intrigued. Um, and I'm really intrigued about uh, the tone of the stories, I think. So they're queer and also seem dark. So it says, under Cancun's hard blue sky, a beach boy provides a canvas for tourist desires, seeing deep into the world's underbelly. An enigmatic encounter in Copenhagen takes an IT consultant down a rabbit hole of speculation that proves more seductive than sex, and the collapse of a love triangle in London leads to a dangerous hypnotic addition, addiction. Um, and then in a Nevada desert, a grieving man tries to merge with an unearthly machine. That sounds so up my alley. <laughs> That's why it's uh, number three on this list. So um, yes, I've never heard of it before and I'm very glad that the prize brought it to my attention and I will be trying to pick it up. I hope that our library um, gets it. Uh, next up, the second one is Love in the Big City, which is uh, by Sang Young Park, a Korean translation from Grove Press. Um, and this is an explicitly gay, queer story from Korea, which is amazing. Um, I haven't read that many that are explicitly queer. Um, I've read one that have hints of queerness or the queer character is the villain. Um, but not yet one like this, so I'm very interested. So this is following a boy who is uh, a student who pinballs from home to class to the beds of Tinder matches. He and his female best friend go to bars and they go out drinking and partying. His friend eventually leaves and he has to kind of grow up, but it's also about him meeting possibly the love of his life, uh, who is a man, and I think it just sounds amazing and I really, I really, really, really want to read this one. And the only reason that there's one that I want to read more is because the number one spot goes to Cursed Bunny by Bora Chung. This is also from Korea. It's published by Hanford Star. And I just finished this this morning. Um, so I asked for this for Christmas. I just read it. And I really, really, really loved it. Uh, and I know that Willow feels the same. So uh, in this, we are similar. And this is just a collection of dark short stories that deal with body horror and gore and redemption and revenge. Um, and every single story is like really, really unique. Um, Chung has a way of writing very evocatively. Her writing style reminds me of Otessa Moshbeg where, Moshbeg, where it's very visceral and disgusting in a very human way. So if that sounds interesting to you, I so highly recommend this. This isn't a review, but th this is why it's my number one, like, most exciting on this list, because I can't even lie. And it's the only one that I have read. Um, but yeah, I can't even lie, this was great. Um, and I can't wait to see which of probably the top six, the, the absolutely yeses and the probably yeses, um, I will get to and what I think of them. So yeah, let me know which books from the prize you are anticipating, if you are anticipating, but I hope that this list gave you some idea of what I'm thinking about the prize uh, and what I'm absolutely not gonna pick up and what I absolutely am gonna pick up. So yeah, without further ado, I'm gonna say bye for now. I hope you are having an absolutely amazing day and I will chat to you in another video soon. Lots of love, bye.